Hi, Daniel Johnson here, your bidet expert and owner of ManyBidets.com, where over the last eight years, we've sold over 10,000 bidets. Today, we're going to talk about how to install the BioBidet Discovery DLS bidet seat. We're gonna walk through it from start to finish, talk about what you need, and make sure that you have a good understanding of how it works. This is your standard water hookup for a toilet. One of the most common mistakes we see people make is trying to connect the T connector that they receive to the water inlet. Uh, the T connector should be connected on the bottom side of the toilet tank. If you run into a scenario where that doesn't work for you because this area is skirted and hidden, you can always purchase an alternate T connector from us that will allow you to connect down here as well. So the first step that we'll want to take is turning off the water supply. So we want to make sure that this, and these can differ. Sometimes, it's a, sometimes it spins a lot. Sometimes it is just a quarter turn. This is just a quarter turn. But you'll basically want to make sure that this is turned off so that water is not running through this hose. Once the water supply is turned off, you'll want to drain the water tank by holding down on the flush lever, or if you have buttons on the top, holding down on those flush buttons to drain out as much water as possible. Once you've done that, you can then unscrew this connection. You'll want a towel handy to sop up any water that comes out because there will be a little bit of water when you do that. And then you're going to take your T-connector and connect it on the bottom side. Again, keep in mind, if you try to connect this T-connector to the water inlet, this thread is way too large for that to be doable. This is designed to work without needing any plumber's tape, so keep that in mind. Uh, if, you, if you use a little plumber's tape, use it very sparingly. Technically, it is designed to operate without any. And then we connect the water supply to the bottom of that T-connector that we just connected to the tank. Uh, one common question we get here now I'm getting dirty, gross toilet tank water coming through to my bidet. Incorrect, and the reason is that you have back pressure on this hose. So the back pressure is going to keep the water that's in the tank in the tank and the water going to the bidet to the bidet. The two aren't going to intermingle. So that's an important thing to keep in mind. Once we've got these two connections connected up and, and tight, we can connect this hose as such. And then as you may have guessed, this side is gonna end up connecting to the bidet seat. Now we need to install the mounting plate. We have the mounting plate itself, which is a hard plastic. It's got some rubber pads on the bottom. And we have two of these brackets. These brackets allow us to position the mounting plate further forward or further back as needed. We'll look at that here in a moment. Also as part of the mounting hardware, this particular unit uses top mounting kit. So it's a rubber sleeve that a bolt goes into. And if you look at the bottom side of these, you can see a little metal ring. So basically what happens is this allows you to mount on a toilet that doesn't have access to the bottom side of the bolt holes. And what you do is you push these guys into those toilet holes, those toilet bolt holes. Snug is good here. Let me reach around the side here and pull it through so that you just have the rubber ring up here at the top. And what happens is as you put a screw in here and you tighten it, the screw pulls up on this metal part on the bottom. And when it does that, it presses this bulb against the bottom side of the toilet porcelain. And thus this bulb basically grips the bottom side tightly. Uh, top mounting kits coming with a bidet seat is great 
because regardless of whether or not you have a skirted toilet or you have a standard toilet, you have what you need as far as mounting hardware. Um, the other side of that coin is I do find that top mounting kits don't tend to get quite as tight. Uh, you also can't keep it loose while you're positioning the seat and then tighten it down. So there are some disadvantages. Um, in general, I would say the advantages outweigh the disadvantages slightly, but just something to keep in mind. Now we're going to install this mounting plate. So we're going to put it over those holes and the little hook that we see, the little indi in indention with the hook goes forward. So the seat's going to slide it and clip into that. So if you have it where the indention is facing backwards, like this, you know you have it on incorrect. That indention needs to be facing forward with the hook so that the seat can grab onto it. All right, well, let's go ahead and put in these bolts real quick. All right, so as we're tightening here, we do want to make sure that we get a chance to use the diagram here that BioBidet provides. And this basically shows us what sort of wiggle room we have to work with. So we want to make sure that these flaps don't go over the back of the bowl. And we want to make sure that the back piece of this uh, cardboard is not touching the, the porcelain in the back to make sure that we're going to have a, a solid fit. You can also see that each of these, um, each of these washers has a groove in it. So we'll want this, these to be as much centered as possible in comparison to one another to make sure that this mounting plate is also centered. Um, so we'll want to keep an eye on that as well. And with that done, let's go ahead and tighten these guys down. Now remember here, because of the fact that we are dealing with a top mounting kit, we want to get this as tight as we want to use before sliding the, the seat in, because once the seat is slid into the mounting plate, there's no adjusting it. So we wanna make sure that it's as tight as we want before that. And then we grab the seat. So on the bottom of the seat, we can see that there is a groove on either side here and here. These grooves are going to slide in to these two locations on the mounting plate. So right here and right here. This middle piece here with a little hole is going to slide in right here. And that little hole is what this little hook is going to clip into. So we're just going to go ahead and of course, you can see the end pieces here. Those are going to slide in here. So let's go ahead and turn this over, set it in place. If you can get around the side to eyeball it a little bit, it makes it much easier and then slide. And you kind of heard that click. Uh, it's not quite in. Let's go and push a little bit more here. There we go. There's the click. Now it's in place. Pretty solid there in place. We do have a release button. So let me show you that real quick. There's a little button here. So this button activates to release. Let me get around. Right now, if I pull on the seat, nothing happens. If I press this little release button, it allows it to come off. Basically what that button does you may or may not be able to see, but it pushes that little clip, allowing you to pull it off. So that's how that piece of the puzzle works. All right, let's see, we're almost there. There we go, and you could hear it actually click in and the button popped out as well. So we know we're good. If that button is not flush, you probably don't have it slid all the way back. And now we have one more piece of the puzzle and that is connecting the water supply. So we take the rubber cap off. 
Let me do it from this side here real quick. And we're just gonna put this on. You'll notice all of these connections have rubber in them. Uh, so look for that rubber before tightening it just to make sure that you're not um, missing it. Cause obviously if you don't have that rubber seal, you're more likely to have issues with leaking. So that's on, we have everything connected. The seat is on the toilet. The water supplies are all connected. All we have to do now is plug it into electricity and turn this to turn the water supply on and we're set to go. One thing I do want to note before I end this video, and that is that in order to test the unit, you have to activate the seat sensor. We get one in 10 customers calling us saying, hey, you sold us a faulty seat. And I say, well, what's happening? Well, the wash doesn't work. Well, are you testing the wash or actually trying to use the wash? They always say they're testing it. They're not seated on the unit to test it because they're trying to test it with the remote in hand. These units have seat sensors built into them. So if you're not seated on the unit, it's not going to spray. So do yourself a favor, save yourself the stress. When you go to test this the first time, actually give it a trial run to make sure that you don't run into that problem. All right, well, we will be back with a review video once we have electricity to this and we'll get to, uh, get to see uh, what it can do. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, feel free to subscribe to this YouTube channel to get more videos like this uh, on the Discovery and other new products coming out. And have a great day. Minibidets.com, where we sell mini bidets, not mini bidets.